Will Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan Wolverines run the table in the 2023 season? You are locked on Big Ten. Your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Big Ten. I'm Craig Scheman, and this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today and get started. And we want to thank all of you everydayers for joining us here on Locked On Big Ten. Here's what we're going to do today. Uh, first segment, we are going to start what is going to be our daily Football previews for the Big Ten. We're going to start with the Michigan Wolverines today, and we're going to look ahead at their upcoming season, and then we're going to take a look at their schedule, and I'm going to give you some analysis of each of the games and whether they can go undefeated and run the table and make a run for a national championship. Then we're going to close it out with our Big Ten Top Ten, our benchmark feature that we do today, except I'm going to open it up a little bit, tweak it just a little bit, uh, we are going to look at famous alumni at each and every one of the Big Ten schools. Just one, just one. And we used artificial intelligence to come up with this list. So stay tuned for all that coming up. Be sure to subscribe and follow Lockdown Big Ten for free wherever you get your podcast. That way you'll get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. All right, so what do we think about this Michigan football team this year? They've had a lot of success in the last two years. Last year, 12-0, 9-0 on the conference, first in the East, back-to-back -back Big Ten championships, and, of course, making it into the playoffs. So what does Jim Harbaugh have in store this season? Quick thumbnail idea on the season. I think this team is actually going to look a little bit like Bo Schembechler except instead of three yards and a cloud of dust, it might be 30 yards and a cloud of dust and a lot of good defense. I think that's going to be the backbone of this Michigan football team. First of all, let's start off with the running back. And um, we know that Blake Corum is coming back from the injury. Guy had like 1,800 yards or 1,500 yards and uh, 18 touchdowns when he got injured last year in the Illinois game in November, had surgery in December, did not participate in the spring, but did announce he wanted to come back. He didn't want to go out like that. And the guy is just a low rider. He's 5'8". He's like a bowling ball, runs low to the ground, knocks people over. And uh, it's a big boost for this Michigan team to get him back this year. They also have Donovan Edwards, as you remember. And this guy is capable of rushing for 1,000 yards on his own, too. So they have a nice one-two punch at running back. Really, uh, really good punch on offense. Meanwhile, the quarterback, J.J. McCarthy, a lot on his shoulders this year uh, as he comes back and probably will be the best quarterback in the Big Ten. Third team all Big Ten last year. Second team all Big Ten in the media poll. And they also got a little help there. Jack Tuttle, a graduate transfer from Indiana University, coming in to back him up. So that's what uh, the quarterback position looks like for Michigan. They are in good shape there, quarterback and running back. Now, Michigan historically has been known for its offensive line production as well. They took in some transfers this year, some interesting moves uh, out of Arizona State. Ladarius Henderson. And I think he might move right into that starting left tackle spot uh, coming over in the transfer portal. That's a big responsibility for a new guy, and we'll see how quickly it takes this offensive line to gel. They've also got uh, Drake Nugent uh, from Stanford and also Miles Hinton. They, he came over from Stanford as well. Both guys from Stanford, both guys battling injuries, both guys with surgery. That could be a question mark, see how quickly they both can get up and going. And, you know, with an offensive line, it takes five guys, not just five individuals. It's five guys up front learning to play with each other and gel. And sometimes that could take some time. Nugent is interesting in that he can play both uh, guard and center, so very versatile and a good get by Jim Harbaugh and Michigan up front. So that's a look at them up front, running back, quarterback. If there is a question mark for this Wolverines football team this year, it is at wide receiver. 
Cornelius Johnson comes back. He had 32 catches and 499 yards last year. That's pretty modest. Everybody will remember him. The four catches, 160-yard, two-touchdown game against Ohio State. I mean, what a game to get noticed. So if he can come back and duplicate any of that, Michigan might be fine at wide receiver, but he wasn't that productive throughout the entire season. So he's got to dig deep and, and see if he can have, I don't know if that was lightning in a bottle or if, if he can be that kind of a player game in and game out. Because the next guy they got on the depth chart, Darius Clements, he was a freshman last year. He only had one catch. Uh, so they don't have a lot coming back at wide receiver. Another interesting spot for Michigan is the tight end uh, position. Colston Loveland, sophomore, was co-offensive rookie of the year last year. Uh, just had 16 catches, pretty good blocker, good size. He's 6'5". He's a big guy. And a lot of people are wanting to compare him to former Michigan All-American Jake. But I think that's unfair to go ahead and give him that kind of uh, comparison at this point of his career. I mean, he's got to, you know, he's got to earn it. He's got to play. They have a lot of big expectations for Colston Loveland at tight end. They also got A.J. Barner, a transfer from IU, to help out with a little bit of depth on the offensive line. As far as the Michigan defense goes, they gave up 16 points per game last year. They were dynamite. They were really good. They got six starters back. That's a modest number there. Um, they are deep on, on the defensive line. A lot of rotation guys. They're going to ask Braden McGregor to come in and replace Mike Morris, who was a Big Ten uh, defensive lineman of the year last year. That's a tall order. But, you know, they've been, they've been cranking guys through at that position. I mean, Aiden Hutchinson on down. And um, they have some other guys as well, like Mason Graham and Chris Jenkins, who bulked up a little bit this year. Again, a lot of rotation guys on the defensive line. If you take a look at Michigan at linebacker, they got uh, Junior Colson coming back. He led the team with tackles last year with 101 tackles, flies all over the football field. Second team coaches, all Big Ten list last year. So he's going to be the anchor in there of that Michigan defense. And they also have Michael Barrett. He's returning for his sixth season. So they got a little bit of experience there. Where they don't have as much experience is in their secondary. Might be a learning curve for some guys back there. But uh, Will Johnson will come back. He was he played, he started as a true freshman last year, and they'll rely on him quite a bit as well. Um, another question mark outside of wide receiver is the kicking game for the Wolverines because that has been something they have not had to worry about at all for the last five years. They had Jake Moody back there, and he was so good that the 49ers actually used a third-round pick in the NFL draft. So he is, uh, he has moved on. And y you know, if you follow football first, second, third round teams, don't take kickers. The 49ers took a kicker. They took Jake Moody. That's how good he was. And uh, so we'll see that. I think there'll be a couple of kids fighting out for that uh, kicking position for the Michigan Wolverines. As long as we're talking about the Wolverines, one side note regarding recruiting for the 2024 season Right now, I'm looking at polls that have them ranked about the third highest recruiting class in college football. They have 23 commitments already, uh, including quarterback Jaden Davis out of Charlotte, one of the best quarterbacks available. He just uh, committed back in March. So that's a combo look at the team that's going to be on the field this year and just a peek into the future with recruiting for Michigan football. And now that we've looked at them, uh, we're going to take a closer look at their schedule, I'm going to play a little win-loss with you and do a little analysis for you on this football schedule and see if they indeed can run the table in the 2023 football season. But first, I want to tell you about FanDuel. FanDuel, of course, is the sponsor of this show today. Baseball season is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet does not win. Just go to fanduel.com slash locked on and join today. Here's what I like to do with baseball season, I don't necessarily bet on games or point spreads or all that. I like to shorten the game. I like to look for a good pitching matchup and then take just a first inning under or maybe first five inning under. That's what I do. 
You do your thing. You do you. But do it at FanDuel. Uh, don't miss your chance to snag a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars when you join FanDuel today. Just go to fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball, Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Okay, let's take a closer look at the Michigan Wolverine football schedule. I'm going to break this down into about five parts. First of all, uh, the first three games that they open up, I'm going to tell you right now, they're opening it up 3-0, and no doubt about it. Start out September 2nd. Going to take on Eastern Carolina. Uh, no disrespect to the Purple Pirates. I actually think uh, they're a pretty good team this year and will have a good season. But Michigan's winning this game by at least by four touchdowns. No doubt about it. That'll be a noon game starting off the season on the Peacock Network if you're interested. But that should be a pretty easy win. I think the only question is, it's the first game. So does Michigan come out? rusty at all off of summer practice and kind of get take a while to get into the flow or do they come out just with their hair on fire and go um but at least four touchdowns i think they win by that much the following week they take on unlv now michigan may win by a lot of points they, they win by 50 on this game it's uh, on cbs at 3 30 i'm stunned unlv i know it's because of michigan but i'm stunned that unlv got a national game on cbs no offense to UNLV, although it does sound like offense to UNLV, but Michigan wins that one, probably their biggest margin of victory all year. And then the following week to close out week three, they got a 7.30 game under the lights in the big house on the Big Ten Network against Bowling Green State University. That program is usually pretty tough, but, I mean, Michigan will win this football game and start out the season 3-0. and Then Michigan's first Big Ten game of the season is against Rutgers, Noon game, week four, Greg Schiano bringing his five-team win in from last year, trying to take a step in the right direction, but they're going to run into a buzzsaw on the Wolverines at the big house, no doubt about it. And then the uh, the Michigan uh, Wolverines close out September on the road at Nebraska. First road game of the season. So first four are at home, and then they're at Nebraska for week five. Remember, Matt Rule is new there, taking over for Scott Frost. And by the way, did you know Nebraska? I mean, I grew up, Nebraska was always awesome. Do you know that uh, they're the only power five school to not have been at least one bowl game since 2016? However, I, I did read uh, right before airtime that they did sign a four-star wide receiver in uh, Devon Hall. So some good news there. Uh, Matt Rule, new, new job and everything, getting after it, recruiting pretty hard there at Nebraska. Back-to-back -back road games for Michigan. After Nebraska, they go to Minnesota. Should have no problem with PJ Flex team. They're in just rebuild mode. I don't think they have nearly as much talent as Michigan, and that should be another comfortable victory for the Wolverines. Then on October 14th, they take on my alma mater, the Indiana Hoosiers. Tom Allen should have uh, Taven Jackson settled in at quarterback at that point. But uh, I do expect an improvement for Indiana a little bit, but not enough to hang with Michigan at the big house this year. So now uh, Michigan's rolling, and uh, then they've got at Michigan State. I have this as their first hiccup. Not that they're going to lose. Don't get me wrong. I just mean a possible st stumbling block on their um, attempt at a perfect season. I saw a lot of stuff this weekend on social media, and I don't know what spurred it on. Just the rivalry, I guess. Mel Tucker versus Jim Harbaugh. Who's the better coach? Who's the better coach in the state of Michigan? A lot of back and forth on social media. That's always going on. That's what rivalries are all about. Um, again, it's at Michigan state. I, this is going to be a tough game for Michigan. I think they better be prepared to play. I still think they can and will win it, but that one, that one will be a, that'll be a fight after that. Uh, Michigan then goes on to, uh, host Purdue. Purdue will have a new coach and a new quarterback, but again, not enough talent to hang with the Wolverines at the big house. So now if they're still, uh, undefeated at this point, they got three games left. Two of the three, pretty tough. I, I think the toughest on their schedule. Um, on the 11th of November, they're at Penn State. Now, this will not be a nighttime whiteout primetime TV. It's a big Fox, big noon game at Fox. So uh, I think Michigan catches a break there uh, having them because it's so tough to play at Penn State at nighttime during those whiteouts. So a noon game instead. I did see some analysis. I think it was one of those ESPN analysis. I think Michigan has a 53% chance of winning. Again, that game could go either way. That is a tough game. 
and they stay on the road two weeks in a row because then they've got at Maryland. Look, Michigan should win this game, but I'm going to tell you right now, that's going to be the sleeper. That's going to be the look ahead game. That's the one they got to be careful with because the next week is Ohio State. This happened to Ohio State last year in November. Remember, they played at Northwestern, and they were in trouble in the first half. Northwestern half. I think Ohio State only won that game against a one-win Northwestern team, 21-7, memory serves me right. That, that could happen to Michigan there, coming off a tough Penn State game on the road and then ended up uh, looking ahead to Ohio State. Maryland could be tough. Watch out for that classic trap game right in the middle. But they should win the game. And then it all comes down to Ohio State. Always does, right? Look, and I think Ohio State's going to be pretty good. In fact, we're going to preview them in tomorrow's podcast. So check that here on Locked On Big Ten. I think this game comes down to Michigan's power running game versus Ohio State's elite receivers and their passing game at that point. They've got the best receivers in the entire Big Ten, uh, just from top to bottom, no doubt about it. So they could be flying high and scoring uh, and, and throwing the ball, or is Michigan going to be asserting their will and power running game? That's what it's going to come down to. If Michigan wins that game, I think they can run the table win the Big Ten championship, and then go on and uh, take another shot at the playoffs and a national championship for Jim Harbaugh. And then maybe Jim will start looking for NFL jobs. I, that's just a joke. He does it every year. I, I, he does it every year. All right. So that's our preview of the Michigan Wolverines. They're looking pretty good. They're looking pretty good. Tough to beat, no doubt about it. All right. Since we've looked at them, our next feature is going to be our Big Ten Top Ten as we roll through Locked On Big Ten. All right. Last time, last segment here uh, on Mondays, we are going to do our uh, top 10 Big Ten here. And I'm going to tweak it a little bit this week because I don't want to leave anybody out. So here's what I did. I wanted to see who the most famous uh, alum is at each of the Big Ten schools. And so I didn't want to leave my out. So it's it going to be a list of 14. So forgive me on that. And um, we use chat GBT. Artificial intelligence came up with this list. So let's, uh, let's check it out here. This is the most uh, famous alum at all the schools in the Big Ten. We'll start off, and by the way, if you're listening on the podcast, we got these up on graphic. If you want to watch it uh, on YouTube, hey, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, you can watch it on the video on, on YouTube, but uh, I'll explain it to you if you're listening on the audio podcast on the Lockdown Podcast. Gerald Ford for the Michigan Wolverines at the, uh, at the number one spot there, since we're featuring Michigan today out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, he played football for them. So, uh, he, uh, I agree with that one. I didn't come up with these the artificial intelligence came up with these next going across the top of the graphic. We got Hugh Hefner, really Illinois. That's the best we could come up with. We could have gone Jerry Colangelo, uh, financier, Susie Orman, Dan Fogelberg, maybe, I don't know. How about Gene Hackman, most famous fighting Illini alum in Hoosiers? Anyway, next across the board, uh, anybody that ever goes to Purdue will tell you, hey, did you know Neil Armstrong graduated here? Yes. They put a man on the moon. Neil Armstrong, definitely the most famous Boilermaker of all time. Northwestern. Again, chat GPT coming up with this. Stephen Colbert. Late night TV, most famous. Penn State, it grabbed Joe Paterno. Put him up there, famous or infamous, however you want to look at it. Joe, Paterno, uh, Joe Pa is on there. And uh, another athlete for Michigan State. They go with uh, Magic Johnson. Might not argue with that. The Iowa Hawkeyes list Ashton Kusher, actor, punked, among other things. Wisconsin, Frank Lloyd Wright architect uh he he drew up the plans for the guggenheim and those of you that watch seinfeld know that uh, there's an episode about that where george costanza claimed to design the guggenheim and really didn't take him that long either from what i hear 
So uh, look, other ones from Wisconsin, we could have gone uh, Frank, uh, or rather uh, Charles Lindbergh, Jim Lovell, as long as we're mentioning astronauts, Bud Selig, maybe. Also, uh, Sergey Brin at Maryland. You know who he is? He's like the ninth richest dude in the world. He basically invented Google. Mark Cuban at Indiana University. I don't know why they didn't put me. I'm a little bit insulted, but I'll, I'm okay with it. Cubes gets in there as the entrepreneur and the owner of the Mavericks and, uh, of course, Shark Tank as well. At uh, Minnesota, if you like your old school music, how about Bob Dylan? Like Rolling Stone, he's in there. Bob Dylan out of Minnesota. James Gandolfini, uh, the late actor out of Rutgers, The Sopranos. Jesse Owens, one of the best athletes of all time uh, out of Ohio State. And Warren Buffett, the most famous alum out of uh, Nebraska. And uh, the wealthiest, I'm sure, as well. So that's a look at that list. Famous alum from across the Big Ten, according to Chat GBT. Well, I want to thank you for making Lockdown Big Ten your first listen every single day. Every day is our next show. We'll take an early look at the Ohio State football program. I know a lot of Buckeyes may have been watching and had to endure us talking about Michigan today. And so tomorrow... Equal time, we'll do the Ohio State Buckeyes, no doubt about that. And uh, I'm also inviting you to be one of the cool kids. I talked about when we started this podcast last week, being one of our group here, our Big Ten group. Make sure you check us out every day, podcast, YouTube, subscribe. Best way to interact with me is on Twitter right now, at Talk Big Ten. You see it right there on the screen, at Talk Big Ten. And um, again, be sure to subscribe and follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app, and you'll get the latest episode of Lockdown Big Ten as soon as it is available each and every day. Tell your friends about us. Also, now you can check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast for the latest on everything else going on in sports. Appreciate you checking us out today. Have yourself a great day, and we'll see you next time.